it's live boom never done this before um going live tonight with stephanie here my lovely girlfriend and better half she is going to be joining us while we're going to drink some beers and talk about how to taste them um how to order them up uh so you're not you know compromising your palate i know that sounds very like new to say but um you definitely want to have them in a certain order so that being said if you have a beer grab it and crack it we're getting started with crispy boys so i have central artery hell is lager from trillium brewing my family over there we're going to give you a look at the can there in a minute <laughs> i'm thirsty it's been a long day we got to drink fast for this oh boy that's gonna be the best part this is going straight to the dome today is our friday Neither of us have work tomorrow. Neither of us have work tomorrow. And one of the things I wanted to talk about, Steph, was you know, why Thursdays have become my favorite day of the week. That is precisely why we'll elaborate a little bit more on that. First things first, cheers. All right, always saying cheers. Now, when we look at this, right, we want head on the beer. I'm actually jealous of Steph's pour because she got more foam in hers than mine. You want foam on your beer, especially when you're trying to taste it and see what it's there for. The foam is going to give off more aroma, right? It's really going to let the smell <clears throat> of that beer shine. Now, you always, speaking of aroma, want to start with smelling your beer. Right? A, because it's a snotty thing to do, but B, <laughs> because it smells good. And you actually have two palettes, right? Your hard palate and your soft palate. Smelling the beer is going to stimulate a different palate than tasting the beer will. I don't know which one's which, but go with me because that's how it works. Thanks for the comment. Sup, losers. Steph's better. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. I absolutely love this. This is, I've had this before, it's not the first time I've tasted it. I will retaste it a thousand times more. It is exactly what you want after a 10 and a half hour work day. Um, personally, I get a lot of like uh, bready, biscuity, light notes in there. Typically exactly what I want out of any kind of lager beer. Um, what do you kind of get off of that? I was actually gonna ask you um, how a lager is made, but I can talk about the taste if you want. Well, I just wanna know what you taste. There's no there's no rules to this game. Um, Freddie likes to talk about all the different types of tasting notes and I'm not as good at it as he is. So he said all the things. After a couple of beers, they all just smell and taste like beers. But uh, That's not true. Depends on the style. Anyway, there's no rules of this game. You taste what you taste. And it's it's a lager, but it is better than Yingling. Love Yingling, don't you dog on Yingling? I do. I also enjoy Yingling. I miss Yingling. I, I miss Yingling. You can get Yingling in Massachusetts. I know, but it's not the same. I feel like it sits on the shelf a little longer. Nobody knows what it is. It's not a regular thing. It feels different. It just feels different. It's like tacos in Massachusetts. We have better ones in our kitchen, although we haven't really had them out anywhere. But I feel like tacos anywhere that haven't been Southern California or Mexico just haven't cut it. Yeah, they have Except haven't. Austin, Texas. Shout out to Austin, they have good tacos. Yeah. Um, anyway, one of the things I wanted to add it because I was so excited to get in this beer and thrown off by Michelle's hysterical comment, is the first thing we do is we taste with our eyes. So before even smelling the beer, right, Tasting with your eyes. We are going to make sure we emphasize that. Hold on, on the next guys. One, right? Hold but on. What does it look Be like? Be right back. What does it look like to you? Right? So, right now, I love just looking at the view out here behind the camera uh, through this glass. Beautiful, light straw color. It's clear. Mm. So, you asked about loggers? Yes. Freddie, how is a logger? Made. How's a lager made? I can talk about this all day. So lagers are different. You have two different kinds of beers, right? You have lagers, you have ales, right? Most lagers are going to be that very light, tend to be lower alcohol, clear, and you know, talked about like crispy 
right? Uh, the reason they have that is because they ferment for longer periods of time at cooler temperatures. So that causes a less aggressive fermentation, it's slower, it's a little more, you know, structured out over time. And, you know, the beer just has a little more time to mature, fully attenuate. And from that, you get a beautiful, light, clean character. Lager is more a method of brewing as opposed to a kind of beer itself, right? Like a pilsner is lagered when it's made. Uh, you know, some hefeweizens are lagered when they're made. Uh, you can, you know, just cool ferment like that for a period of time with any real beer. Uh, but the main nature between the difference of lagers and ales is going to be in the yeast itself because lager yeasts. A are meant to do that, but they also do their action at the bottom of the fermenter as opposed to up towards the top in the body where ale yeast reside and do their work. Nerd! Yep. <laughs> Let's go on the next beer. Slam this. Nerd! Just kidding, it's really cool. Oh, it's a little chilly. Rinse your glass in between. Always. Biggest pet peeve. Biggest pet peeve. Make sure no one's up. Uh, oh, that's why I brought the second one, so I cannot oh. be rude to people enjoying this beautiful night. I thought he was just going to straight up throw the water off the balcony. We're on the second floor. That feels like the third floor. Nah. And there's people walking. So, staying with, right, we have five different beers here that we're going to drink. Who knows how long this is going to go. Um, but, yeah, so moving on from our light crispy beers if you will to start off we're going to kind of stay in that realm with you said this was a hefeweizen right that's what it said that's what it said on the website i don't see it on the can but this is ufo made with main blueberries and yeah ufo is typically a hefeweizen i think it's a different kind of company than um harpoon or it's like well harpoon owns it right like them i don't know yeah, I mean, I got them at Harpoon Brewery in Boston two days ago. Did you rinse them? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. You don't look rinsed. You don't look rinsed. I'm not rinsed. I need a shower so bad. It's the first thing I'm doing when this is done. He smells. All right. So, Hefeweizen, still a lighter, lagery beer. This one, made with Maine blueberries, I would assume oh, to be smells good. conditioned. Yes, it smells amazing. Con can get the aroma because there's head on the beer. Anyway, cheers. Let's go through how to taste how to, uh, how to taste again. Cheers. What's the first thing you taste with? Your eyes. Your eyes. And then you taste with your smell buds. So what looks different <laughs> as opposed to the other one? Like right off the bat, uh, I know what I see. What do you, you see? You can't see through it, you guys. No. This one definitely has a little more turbidity to it. Uh, a little more of a haze, if you will. Um, you know, a little hot button word for clowns who love the haze. Clowns. I'm one of them. I'm a clown too. I'm, I'm one of them. Definitely smells like blueberries, tons of blueberries. So we smell and then? Oh, that's delightful. That is delightful. That is a summer beer. I want to sit on the beach. That's and what kind can't. of beer that is. Sure we can. It is the pandemic. You know what? I had this thought earlier. I, like, why are people just w taking walks with masks on? Taking walks, driving in their car. Like, now you see, I, I think I saw four people as I was driving up our hill here taking walks outside Maybe with masks Maybe they on. have like, coronavirus. But the masks are for, like, indoors, close proximity. Like, and, and I get it. I definitely feel better with one on, but... How do you not want to just breathe fresh air? I know. I know. Especially today because today is beautiful. Mm. And we can see the, the little horizon of the Atlantic Ocean from here. We kind of see the Atlantic Ocean. When we can see the Atlantic from the balcony, it's a beautiful day. Yes. All right. This, I'm loving this. Yeah, this is great. More and more. Michelle, I think you would love this. Um, I think you would love it a lot. But I'm unsure if you could even get this beer. Did they have other kinds like this? Um, I don't know. I think this is a seasonal beer. But it's amazing! It's very good. So, how would one 
do you think brew something with a subtly sweet blueberry taste? Generally, you're going to condition on the blueberries. Like The best way to do that would be after the beer goes through its fermentation phase, you would do a uh, secondary fermentation, um, which probably wouldn't even ferment that much further, uh, but you would you know, transfer the beer to a second tank where it is removed off like the yeast and grossness that forms down on the bottom. And in there you would add whatever fruit or other ingredients that you'd want to do and just let it sit for time. Typically at a cooler temperature, uh, but your regular 68 to 72 degrees generally happens as well. But in there, especially with the fruit, um, there's still going to be some yeast and things in the beer that will ferment the sugars from said fruits, uh, just to give it a little more. And that's kind of what uh, dries it out, gives it a little bit of a tartness in a way. And there you go. We've made a blueberry beer in the past, and it was phenomenal, and we need to do it again. Yeah, it was phenomenal, except the second batch. The second we, batch was a disaster. Yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> that was bad. It's not all good. Also, um, a lovely friend just texted you, so I just messaged him, that's what I was doing. Who's that? Mark Paul. Oh. But I um, messaged him and said. What's up, Mark Paul? I said, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, so we definitely want to make our, our blueberry again. Oh, we did it as a, yeah, we did it as a blonde ale. And that was back when we were brewing larger batches, extract batches, moved on from that, making big kid beers now with all grains, and it is, has been good. Yeah, it's been really good. It's been good. It's, but I, well, you think the Citronavirus beer was good, the Citronavirus IPA. But I did I not mean, think it was good. But, I mean, it goes along with the theme, you know? I think that beer was better at first. I think I was more excited for it than honest with it. And Yeah, it's as bad as the coronavirus. No, I'm just kidding. Well, why don't you... It's not as bad as the coronavirus. Explain... Explain... <laughs> how to just try... Explain it. Because it was... <laughs> it was an experiment gone, gone wrong. You messed stuff up. We got an experiment going wrong currently, but we're letting it ferment out to yeah. see what happens. So, uh, Michelle, I'm sorry. Uh, the the saison that we're making, well, fingers crossed, it turns out okay, but it's looking a little strange in the in the uh, carboy right now. So uh, we don't we don't know why it's looking strange. Uh, we had something happen that we'll get to, but I think the biggest bummer is I hope we don't lose these two yeast cultures out of it. Which, why don't you say what we, what we did? Let's get the yeast cultures, yeah. We went out, right out here, to the, to the, to the trees and plucked off some flowers. Uh, two flowers that are from trees and then we also tried dandelions as well, but we only ended up using the two flowers from the trees. The dandelion one smells like egg farts. It smells worse than and egg And I farts. need to get rid of it, but I don't want to open it up in my apartment. It's, it's not good. Oh, there's no pesticides on these um, trees because no one cares to take care of this because it's not the property of the, um, of the uh, apartment complex. No, these are these are wildflowers. Yeah. It was pear flower and it was uh, staghorn sumac, just growing on trees in the woods. Um, took them, mixed them with a dry malt extract, a uh, little solution, uh, just give it to some sugars. Yeast from plants fermented those sugars over about two weeks, got a nice little starter going, pitched that into a one gallon batch of wort or wort and looked great up until, as we were knocking out, noticed a, a strange thing, um, just like gunk, that I don't know how the fuck it got on or in there. It, we, I did one new step of adding the sparge water, and that required the addition of another pot into the setup, and I think I should have cleaned it better. Yeah, that plot, pot, that plot, that pot was not okay. It's a bad plot. It's a bad story. It's a bad, bad plot. But mistakes made are lessons learned, and it's all how you look at it. Finish that. We're going on to the next one. Thirsty Thursday. Yum.
Thirsty Thursday indeed. So Thursday has become my favorite night of the week because I think it's become my new Friday. It has become your new Friday. It has become my new Friday. But there's something that's so satisfying about uh, like coming home, like after working a long day, after the culmination of your week, that one. You can always go back and forth too. After a long day, after the culmination of your week, coming home and just being like, this night is mine. I'm taking it. This night is mine. I'm gonna take it. All right. Next fun. up, this is one of my favorite beers. Absolutely love this beer. Now, I, I forgot, did you review why you should drink beers in this order, especially if you go to a brewery and order a flight? Oh, don't even get me started on flights. We're going to go there next. <laughs> um, if you order flights, go fuck yourself. Uh, I'm just no. <sighs> brewery worker do over here. Don't Trillium do also doesn't do flights. Um, so this is double dry hopped Melcher Street. One of my all-time favorite beers. Absolutely, Aww. absolutely love the Mosaic Hop. Um, that is your featured hop edition. And this one, obviously, double dry hopped with it. And mo I you know, forgot to mention, too, moving on from our crispy boys to our, you know, a little bit different crispies. We had a little hefeweizen with a little fruit in there. That's okay. Um, we want to get into our IPAs and our hoppy stuff next. So typically, like, a pale ale would go between your crispy boys and your IPAs, uh, you know, because it kind of goes in that trajectory of more body, right? So this one, you can see, has a lot more body to it. Can't even look through there, right? Solid, solid gold color. Nope, can't see the sky. Can't see the sky. Imagine if the sky looked that color. Some nights it does. This beer smells like fruit and pine needles, and it warms my heart. It is lovely. Mm. This is one of the, one of the good ones. Absolutely. Ooh, you want to talk about something, something uh, other nerdy things about beer? Sure. What makes a beer double dry hopped? Double dry hopped. So dry hopping is a technique that happens a lot of times, um, especially with like New England style IPAs. Which, side note, I hate categorizing New England IPAs. Um, I think it's an IPA. It's just how we do it in the East. But, yeah, so a lot of them tend to have those qualities to it. Uh, reason being <clears throat> is that when your beer is boiling, you add your hops. The more time the hops spend in the boil, the more bitter it's going to make your beer. Dry hopping is a technique where you get a lot of the aroma and some of the fruitier, uh, more vibrant flavors out of the hop um, without adding any contribution to bitterness in the beer. So a lot of these beers that maybe taste like tropical flavors or smell like, you know, a, a fruit stand in the summer. That was terrible. Yeah, <laughs> smell know. like a fruit stand. Anyway, um, like Lots I said, straight to the head. Uh, no, so yeah, so. Lots of sweat. You want, what? No. Dripping in your fruit. No, absolutely not. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is that the the dry hopping contributes, you know, a lot to the aroma and a lot to the brighter, fruitier notes of the beer because it's not being broken down or bittered at all. Now, when you add uh, your dry hop, is that pertains to as a brewer how you want it. Um, as a consumer, doesn't really, you know, it's, it's whatever you're drinking the brewer's interpretation, but it can be added. Uh, anywhere from during the fermentation to after the fermentation to you know well after the fermentation uh, You know whatever works for you or whatever that person wants double dry hopping is just a technique where it's happening twice uh, Some people interpret it as a double the amount some people interpret it as a dry hop and then another dry hop uh, When it comes to hops the more the merrier I feel that way. I know you do too um, Also depends on your beer. Hops but, make me hoppy. Yeah, pretty much um, so, that being said, I'm going to top this glass off. I just saw that Sethy boy jumped on. Seth! Seth is my beer brother in crime, and I know he's drinking something good in his glass right now. He's also my beer brother. I got a couple beer brothers 
Seth is one. Uh, Steve Smith is another. Yeah. Where's He's another beer where, brother. Where's McSteverson? I don't know where McSteverson is. Robbie Masso, the co-founder of Beer Belly Fitness. He's another beer brother of mine. Another beer brother. Robbie hopefully will be on later. Um, and Matthew Gruber, another beer brother. Seth has work soon. Sad face, Aww. Seth. That means he's Aww, no drink. Man. Yeah, it's all right. Shout out to Seth. When we moved back from California, Seth flew out to L.A. from Philadelphia and helped us pack and drive back across the country. It was a fucking blast. Uh, one of the best weeks of my life. And yes, absolutely. Thanks for your help. Yeah. You're the man. Thanks, man. And then a beer sister of mine who only recently actually is a fan of beer, Samantha Rizzuto, drove out there with us. I think she, she's more of a cider gal. Michelle's got two roads too juicy. Love it. Too Had two roads too juicy before. Love it. That's Classic the New England. The juice. You can't get a lot of the juice down in Philadelphia area where Michelle is, but you can get two roads too juicy. I feel like they were like... That's when, like, the juicy citrus flavors really started to, like, pop around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Flying Fish. Freddy worked there. Flying Fish. Love those people. And, uh, uh, Jersey Juice? I mean, solid. Probably their best beer. Love Jersey Juice. Love Flying Fish. Big time support local. Jersey Juice was at my sister and her husband's wedding I had it there great time to support local go uh, flying fish Summerdale I mean no one can have weddings right now but if you get some local beer at your wedding go to flying fish for it then yeah tell them Freddy sent you <laughs> like, who's Freddy? just kidding <laughs> no one can forget Freddy it was the last pack man people be cleaning out the shelves Grocery stores are more empty now than they were when this shit all started. Are more empty? Like, not with people, with, uh, like, shit on the oh, shelves. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. It's whack. Meat plants are shutting down and everything like that. Um, Whatever. Let's just drink beer and not think about that. That's what I'm saying. Let's not think about the fact that we live uh, right outside of Boston and we can't explore it at all. At least we had got to for a little bit. We did get to for a little <laughs> bit. Which one of your favorite things about Boston? Go. On the spot. Go. That it is on the bay. Because, I don't know, I just love things that are next to water. And I just love this. Yeah, definitely. And I love the bricks and the stone. A lot of bricks. <laughs> a lot of bricks, a lot of stone. A lot of bricks and stone and water. Yeah, it's a cool city. Cool city. I'm glad we got around. What's your favorite thing about Boston? Go. That it's it's so old. It was like one of the first cities in America, and to this day, everything's just been built on top of it. Uh, you know, even with a GPS, I'm just constantly getting lost. And I know I'm not a local, so I'm on the streets, but it's like <sighs> there's no like grid or system yeah. at all to it. Uh, so I think that's cool. That gives a lot of character. The tea, I mean, fuck the tea. It's, you know, on again, off again every 20 minutes, but it it covers some ground. You can get a lot of places on the train. I'm not it's saying geriatric. the time's very reliable, but, uh, yeah, what'd you say? It's geriatric. It's geriatric. Yeah. Oh, the train is yes. old. Uh, the, tra the train is geriatric. Old train. Never thought I'd say I miss Patco, but Patco is pretty good. What is um high class compared to the tea. But if you, mm. you ever been on it, you know. Oh man, you are like, oh my god! Here, only, take some more. Not only have we climbed in, uh, okay. like bodies of the beer, but we've climbed in ABV as well, and it only goes up from here. We're gonna have to do some drunk history. But also part of how you do the tasting. So like, just so everybody understands, the whole point of doing this was a, it's Thirsty Thursday. B, I just didn't have it in me to write a big long post today. See, this is what I do on my Thursday night anyway. D, 
taste your fucking beer the right way. Drink it in a good order, right? There's nothing worse than when there's a ton of cans or bottles on the table or in a cooler and you're like, ooh, that stout sounds good. Let me start with that. No, mm. no, no. Have a stout at the end or only have a stout and that's it. Can I finish this? Yes, that's why I handed it to you. <laughs> Ah, yes. You know where we're going next? No. Sour. I have no idea what he packed in our cooler out here. This is the... It's a surprise. This is the cooler of fun. I'm just pulling shit out. She has no idea what's in there. This is a wonderful cooler. It is from Target? Did I get it at Target? Did you get it at Target? I, I thought you got it online. Did I get it online? Where did it come from? I don't know. It might have came from Target. Cooler. Did we get I, it in California? No, I, got, I got it. When did we get it? I think I got it here. Did you get it here? Didn't get it here. Or maybe Did New get, Jersey. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what my life is. Anyway. Where do we live? Where's home? What is home? What is home? Who are you? Baby, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, stop. Bottle time. <gasps> Blackberry soak. Oh also trillium. God. It's a lot of, I just, it's easy access. Yeah, there. there's going to be a lot of trillium. So. Obviously. Blackberry Soak, American Sour Wheat Ale aged in oak barrels. I love their sour beer. And look at the simplicity of their label. Simplicity. Just oh. simplicity. In, I think... It does so simplicity. That's one of my favorite things with beer. When it comes to how it's presented, when it comes to how it tastes in the glass, simplicity, I think, wins all. It's cool to be wowed by something. But more often than not, when I'm wowed by something, I don't enjoy it nearly as much as when it's simple. Simplicity wins, always. I really think it does. And sour as this presumably is, uh, bless you. <laughs> it's probably simple. You need to make room for sour. Freddie can't burp, and he doesn't like when I do it. But can't burp. I don't care. Do I look like a I don't care. Whoa! Look at how pretty. This has so much color to it. I love it. Amazing. Okay. Blackberry soak. Alright, so we got a sour wheat, Asian oak. Cheers me. Cheers. Cheers to Michelle's uh, choice of glass. Smell with Not your... Not that I'm a stumper. I know. I, I, I want to... Smell wanna... with your... What? Smell with your eyes. Yeah. And then taste with your nose. Heard that. <laughs> Michelle, if you were here, you would say, this slaps. Slaps. Phenomenal. Also, Michelle, flying fish and a Boston shirt. Wow. That's awesome. I love it. I love it so much. Good stuff. This. My favorite. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Again, taste mirror is a personal thing. There's no right or wrong with any of it. Unless it's gone bad. Then it's wrong. But flavor wise, experience wise, it's all yours. Nobody else can tell you how to do it right. Nobody else can tell you, you know, what you should be tasting this or that. You taste what you taste. For me, sour beers, when I salivate from the corners of my jaw, it is phenomenal. Like it's something with the acidity or what, but I love it. I absolutely love it. It's like a, like a, it's not a, I don't get a pucker. I get like, like a feeling like right here. Like it just punched me in the jaw. I don't interesting. Know. It's That's phenomenal. That's very interesting. That's it like, must be how you swallow coming from a speech pathologist. I think when you swallow, you might spread it. You might, you might spread your liquid down while you. I spread my liquid when I swallow. <laughs> Is that what happens? Yeah. <laughs> Some people swallow differently. Everybody swallows differently. You might have a trickling of 
some of the liquid down toward this part of your mouth and then swallow it versus some people roll it up into a ball in the middle of their tongue and project it back that way. I'm going to start talking about the beer again before this conversation gets any more phallic. Um, but Look, this is my, this is my <laughs> career. <laughs> Sw- Never mind. Moving on. Um, yes, this... Uh, you definitely get the fruit before the funk. Like you, you're like, ooh, that's sweet. Ooh, that's sour. What's or no? Sour patch gets backwards. First it's sour, then it's sweet. This is backwards. Yeah. But it's nice. You have to love it. You also, have to love sour beer. I feel like you have like you either really like it or you don't. Well, I know someone who didn't like sour beer when we first met. I know someone who likes it more now. Than me. I've been in a hoppy mood lately. You've been in a hoppy mood. Yeah, I've been real hoppy. I love the sour beers. This is my, this is my, the sour, the wild ales is my favorite style, hands down, over and over. Wow, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, no, it is. Absolutely. That's where, there's so much, I'm going to sound like such a snot saying this, there's so much depth to it, depth and complexity that just cannot be accounted for and I love that and that makes me happy it makes me happy to know that when you drink a wild ale a spontaneously fermented ale right or lager talk about that that you know who who knows what went into it the people who made it don't know entirely what went into it it's like it's, it's it has its own soul 100% Yeast are pets. Yeast should be held to the same level as our cats and dogs. They should. <laughs> anyway. I would save Alistair's life over yeast culture. As alive as it is. I treat my yeast cultures like pets. Because our apartment complex won't let us have dogs. Yeah, so I can't have a dog, I'm going to have yeast. <laughs> Speaking of that... Those flowers are about to die. We gotta go get more flowers from this this small woodsiness over here. We do, we gotta climb down there. Yo, my hamstring is cramping right now. Like on, during the live, my hamstring is cramping fucking hard. That sucks. I think it's funny. It's all right. Mm. Speaking of cramps, speaking of cramps, I have them all the time. I'm just kidding. Um, cramps kind of relate. It made me think of like, uh, like working out, like you work out and get cramp. And I have significantly cut back my workouts. Did you notice that? Yes. But you've been working a lot, so. Yeah. No, it has a reason. Like I, it feels right to cut them back. And that by cutting back workouts, that doesn't mean disregarding health. And I think this is definitely something I wanted to talk about after a couple beers is that disregarding your workouts is for me I I wouldn't even say disregard but it's cut back it hasn't been a lot of like workouts per se but I've put a lot more focus on uh, my like mobility sitting out at the end of the night phone rolling doing drills like that uh, that kind of stuff has felt better so for me since going back to work have spent a ton of time on my feet Lifting, putting down cases of beer, driving around, um, again, to back to on my feet, to lifting and hauling cases for hours and hours a day. And it's like, first of all, I give it out to everybody who's fucking doing it in hospitals and shit right now. Because they're the real MVPs who have to be there no matter what. And... I feel fortunate to have a job, but like they're the ones at risk, and I think that's uh, that says something. So if you're doing that, going to work every day as a health medical professional, you're the person. You're the dude. You're the chick. You're the person. Um, I'm bitching about a lower back because I'm hauling beer. So you're anyway. just providing the people um, that aren't working what they want. Also, no, that's not true. I'm sure that these healthcare workers really want to drink after work. 
if I had a brewery right now, I would have free beer for any nurse or doctor. That's when they get what Harpoon is doing. Are they really? When they open, if you come in with a valid healthcare ID, um, they have a fund that you donate to whenever you purchase beer from them now for pickup, and that fund donates to this pool of money that will be available to healthcare workers when the brewery. It's kind of like a tab. It's kind of like yeah, a it's like a tab, a tab for the healthcare workers. That's super cool. Yeah. That's super cool. Super cool. Super. I digress. What I was saying was like, because I'm just being fucking broken down all day. Like, when I come home, I have about three hours between to shower, make dinner, and you know. Go go to sleep pretty much, and to fit a workout in there. Some days I do, cause I cause I need to, but it's not every day. It's not every other day. It's not as often as it was, um, because it's not. That's not what I need right now. After being banged up all day long, coming home and like banging myself up more through, you know, intense exercises isn't worth it. It's not worth it for my body. It's not worth it for my time and my daily routine. And so, you know, I put a lot more focus on just winding down and relaxing. And one of the things I want to get more into is like taking the time to, you know, sit down and do breathing exercises and close my fucking eyes and stop, you know, trying to be stimulated by, you know, just things in the room and just focus on bringing yourself down. Well, you, I must say you do a good job doing mobility stuff every single night if you don't work out you're doing mobility stuff and that's kind of what i'm saying is that like you're doing it's it's shifted to other things so like exercise is a stress on the body when you're stressed out and this goes for anybody who's whether you're working from home or working in public if you're stressed out like chronically doing hard workouts you know because you need to is the biggest load of bullshit ever like you exercise is stress on the body applied in a physical way right it's just stress applied with intent you wouldn't intentionally put yourself in emotionally or mental stressful situation but you would do it physically because it feels good or because it burns calories but your body you know neurologically responds to that the same way and that's going to have a huge downturn on your ability to do whatever goal it is, whether you're trying to get leaner, whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to build muscle, adding stress to that, could have been a burp. Oh man! <laughs> adding stress to that is just going to destroy it. I wish your burps were caught on camera. So, if you're, if you're stressed out right now, whether it's mental, emotional, whether it's physical, um, you know, just focus, focusing on things that are going to help you, but help bring you down. And I mean that in like a relaxation sense. Like doing things that are going to help you to feel better. Right? Like strength training, pushing your body, using intense exercise, that feels great when I feel great, when it's applied in a, like a proper sense. Like I have a three day weekend. I'm going to be doing a real hard workout one of those days. And I'm going to feel awesome because of it. But that's the time to do it. When you feel good and you have the energy to. And I mean, like, you know, I'm all for pushing yourself. Like, I think that's important. But I also think it's important to, you know, help yourself too. And listen to your body and give it what it needs. So, whatever that means to whoever is listening to that. Unfortunately, all of us live in... The United States of America and we were raised to believe because our whole culture believes in go 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 no one needs sleep you'll sleep when you die and that is not healthy for any of us no so yeah oh yeah I, I was worked all day I worked all day I was stressed out barely ate anything after work I went to the gym and I had one of the most intense workouts, but I went home, I ate dinner, and then I couldn't fall asleep. And I was asleep for maybe 
three and a half hours and then I woke up and it did it all over again, but that's okay because I'm just grinding, I'm grinding hard. And that is a mindset that is not helping many of many Americans. Man, I'm behind. behind. And I wasn't even talking a lot. Sad. Um, update. Walmart is open. Walmart's open. Yep. The Walmart right behind us closed because an employee passed away, unfortunately, from COVID-19. They had to test all the employees in the store. I think about 12 of them had it. But no one else does. So they were able to reopen. I have enough staff. But I just looked over at the Walmart. But I'll let you know. Just looked over. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to add, when talking about the whole exercise fitness thing, adjusting your routine, that through this time, um, and with the changes that I've made for myself, uh, diet is a huge, huge thing. Um, definitely have made it a point to have a good hand on what I'm eating, making sure that it's whole foods, huge emphasis on getting enough protein. Protein and veggies, like, number one. When I eat carb, like, you know, I, I eat carbohydrates. I'm not anti-carb by any means, but, like, when I eat carbohydrates, it is beans and it is rice, and that's it, pretty much. And that's not, like, a strict Except thing. Except for that homemade gnocchi from my birthday. Except for that homemade gnocchi. <laughs> it was so good. It was good. Right, but that's an occasion to celebrate, right? And that's one of the things that when it's time, like, don't beat yourself up. Enjoy it and then just get right back on the next morning, right? The next day, just get back to it. But nutrition is a huge thing. And making sure that, like, you have your protein, you have your veggies, things like that are going to help keep your body on track. Personally, one of my non-negotiables every day is a salad. Just have a salad for lunch. Uh, if I don't, try and have it for dinner. Uh, but that's like, I know I'm getting a nice protein rich, obviously vegetable rich. And then I like to add some garbanzo beans or whatever in there. Oh, garbanzo. garbanzo beans I don't know if it's best. Italian, but I love saying it like that. Garbanzo. Of course, because you're Italian. That'd be a great name for a dog, Garbanzo. Actually, that is kind of cool. It's a great name. Huh. Garbanzo. Right. <laughs> we have one beer left, and then I need some I food. Really, I really in my like belly. that. This is Channel Marker Brewing. What's it called? I couldn't read it in reverse. The Quartermaster. <laughs> I thought it said the quarantine, and I was about to lose my shit if it did. But it's called the Quartermaster. Channel Marker Brewing. This is a maple pecan stout. And Channel Maker is in Beverly, Massachusetts? Are they? Is that I don't know. They are, right there. I received this as a tip from delivering beers uh, to people on the road. They gave me a four pack of Channel Marker Brewing beers. And every one has been phenomenal, and this is the last one. Now, do you think we'll be able to see through this one? <gasps> no! <laughs> That's a lot of head. <laughs> safe on that one yep yes this is a brewery we have not gone to haven't gone there but we will have to make it there when ever world opens world opens so we're talking about tasting with eyes this is a stout i mean it's it's dark but but it's pretty i think the biggest thing i look with look at with stouts is viscosity like i want to know I don't like a thin stout, right? I like it to be a little thick, have a little body to it, especially if it's gonna carry all that roastiness. So with this, obviously a shit ton of head on this one. Tons of aroma. Definitely get the pecan right off the bat. Uh, super nutty. A little bit of maple on there. I'm sure we'll taste more. I'm gonna get a mouthful of foam on my first sip. Yeah. Now can this is dripping tears? all over my leg. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Delicious. 
delicious. Delicious. Haven't had a bad beer tonight. All good. I get the maple first. It's very sweet initially. Dries out, nutty on the back. I'm not tasting as much maple as Freddie does. I taste more of the nutty and, and the dryness. I would love to know when they did the maple in this, like how they added it. That's a hard flavor to add. Freddie, if you were to make an, an, a maple pecan stout, what would you do? I would do the conditioning like I talked about before. I would just add the maple to it, and then I would add the pecans. But before just adding them, I would toast them. I want to get the oils from the nuts out of there. Oils will eliminate the ability for the beer to carbonate. It kind of prevents that, which we saw from my pour. They definitely did their job of preventing that because there was plenty of foam. Yes. Part of that was bad technique. All that was bad technique. <laughs> <laughs> I think my mom is the only one watching. Hi, mom. Remember it this. It might be. Remember or, this when or I'm famous. Or it might be Michelle because you can't see. <laughs> so you can't see when people come and go. Um, I also had no idea this was happening, so didn't even tell anyone to come on and interact. Which maybe they would have. I don't know. Doesn't matter. It'll be posted anyway as a video. Um, Doesn't matter. It was fun. But you can't see when people go. You can only see when they come. And I've never done a live video before, so... Were you about to say that's what she said? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Scott. Oh! Papa Schwinn and Mama Schwinn. You got here right on the last one. Everybody else got tired of us, so my mom and dad were the only ones to hey, come the, back. It's, Hello. You know who's the, who the, real, the real supporters are? My sister and your parents. <laughs> that's it. Actually, my parents don't use Instagram, so I mean they do. They like my things, but they have literally no idea how to use it. I hope my dad is drinking something good. I hope my mom is drinking Pinot Grigio. That was it. <laughs> well, I don't know because they both have work tomorrow. Where today is our Friday. Oh, it's Friday. Yeah. It's Friday. They gave us a, a um a vacation day tomorrow out of nowhere. So, ooh. Stops are the best. Okay, Mama Swift. Apparently, Mama stops are the best. Okay. 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 That's pretty rad. It's going to start getting dark out here. It's probably a good time that this is our last beer. Yeah. I also need food. Yeah. I need food bad. We didn't have dinner yet. Didn't have dinner yet. Drank five beers. Well, not really five. You split them. It was like two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like two and a half. It was yeah. like two and a half. Hey, can you hear the birds though? Like. Oh. If you can't. Oh my gosh. Sorry. That bird is red. It was straight up red. Oh, I need to get my camera. Steph's gonna go get her camera. I'm gonna order dinner. Take pictures of birds. We're hanging up. Uh, I'm gonna say stay well. I'm gonna say drink well. I'm gonna say enjoy the outside this weekend and take care of your body, take care of your mind, and have a great night. And now I'm gonna try and figure out how to end this. It goes like that. <laughs>